Welcome to the EMBN show from the Bay of Biscay. I'm genuinely terrified. Uh, on today's show, we're riding to get a look at the old Bay of Wild. I don't think I've ever been so scared. Absolutely bricking it. Oh God, get me up there. Bay Wild will be of massive interest to lots of you because it is a great example of a long range, lightweight, full power e-mounted bike. We're not saying it's the first because there were such bikes as the 2018 Levo with a 700 watt hour battery and of course the Bull Sonic Evo AMSL something or other. Uh, but this bike, 750 watt hour battery, has got the option of a 625 and also the option of two motors, the Bosch CX or the CX Race Limited Edition. This is the carbon version of the Wild, and the lightest bike in the range comes in at 20, ooh, what's the water? 20.9 kilos, so super lightweight. Puts it kind of almost in the league of some of the low to mid power bikes. In terms of the detail, this is very much a full on enduro bike. 160 at the back, 170 up front, 29 inch wheels with water on them. Uh, and a really aggressive geometry on the bike, 64 degree head angle on this bike. But what's really interesting about the Orbea uh, range of bikes is the, the customization. You can have full customization of the components and the paintwork on this bike. Now, a really interesting feature of the Wild is the fact that it's got a non removable battery in the down tube. Now this might matter to some people, but remember, you've got to charge the bike as it is. Now it was really interesting talking to the Orbit engineers for the reasons that they've done that. And that's because they wanted to make the bike stiffer and also lighter. It actually worried me talking to the engineers, the fact that you, when you take a big chunk out of that down tube, it's going to be compensated in other parts of the frame. So they've actually saved 900 grams on this frame and actually made it 53% stiffer. Now, when we say stiffer, we don't mean to say that it actually rides like a wooden gate because riding out here in some pretty challenging terrain, there's a really nice flex to stiffness balance of this bike. So um, I think great work from Uber Bay and a very different approach for sure. There's some really nice details on this wild bike. Things such as the ports for the cable routing. As you can see, the down tube, the chainstay area, it's a super clean bike. The uh, battery charging port is really well sealed and in the right place. And then we've got a really nice uh, mud guard there to keep crap out of the way in the linkage. It is a full on bike, that's for sure. Like I said, 160, 170 travel. It's got big forks. It's got big four piston XTR brakes on this bike. And of course, big chunky tires to grip you on the climbs and the descents. Okay, uh, geometry, I feel like I need a stick. There's one there in the Spanish sand. Right, geometry, remember this is a super aggressive bike. 64 degree head angle, 448 mil chain state, 1277 wheelbase on the bike, 480 reach in a size large, and I think it's 505 in a size extra large. So there's a good range of sizing on the wild and a 77.5 uh, C2 bangle, which is, which is great for climbing. Those numbers are, are great numbers. It doesn't matter whether it's on the wild or another bike. Actually, some of the numbers are actually quite comparable to a Trek rail, although the C2 angle is actually steeper on this bike. But hey, why does geometry matter exactly? It's because of places such as this. So C2 angle is super important. It keeps your weight balanced. So 77 degrees on the wild, 448 chain state to keep you, your weight in the right position. It's so important. Just a little tip if you are going to be tackling rock slabs is keep the brakes covered because you don't want to be going tumbling back into the Bay of Biscay. Eh? And finally, 
the heart of the world, which is the Bosch Smart System. Remember, there's, it's all changed in the Smart System this year. We've got a new dinky remote on the handlebar, probably one of Bosch's best ever. You've got a display on the top too, which gives you all uh, the data you need, such as the mode, battery level. Uh, and of course, we've got either the option of a 750 watt hour battery or a 625 in this bike. Uh, and one last thing is the fact that you can actually have a Bosch CX or a CX Race Limited Edition motor. And why does that matter? Slow more normal. Wow, I'm now in eco mode going up a super steep slab. If you're in two minds whether to go for the Bosch CX or the CX Race Limited Edition motor, regardless of what bike it is, not just the wild, uh, I would say that they're quite equally matched, to be honest, but it's in places such as this, which is where the CX race will be at slight advantage. So you've got a step, and immediately you've got another collision. So it's a little bit more overrun in the CX Race Limited motor will get you over that a bit easier. But not only, not only have you got a collision here, you've got another one here. So your back wheel's going into this, front wheel's going into that. This is a very, very complicated piece of ground. So it's collision after collision, step after step. So like I said, it's that little bit more over and it'll probably be the advantage between you making it or not in a place such as this. Uh, don't forget, the standard Bosch CX motor is already an amazing motor, but let's uh, put my money where my mouth is and uh, try and conquer this mess of rock. There's one, there's two, there's three. <laughs> Obviously, good tires are important in a situation oh, such as this. Wow. You've got to love e-bikes, right? It's such good fun. So there you go, folks. The old Bear Wild, a great example of a long-range, lightweight, full-power bike. It's not the first one, as I mentioned, but 20.9 kilos, it's a great example. Sorry, folks, a uh, brief interlude here. We've come from Bass Country to Bath for a very important announcement. It's giveaway time. We have got one of the brand new Bell Full 10 helmets to give away. Uh, before I will introduce you to the helmet, I'm going to tell you that the link is in the description down below. So you guys can choose any size, any color, and it'll be shipped globally. And here it is. And I have to say what a stunning helmet it is. Uh, it is a step up from the Bell Full 9, which we've been using extensively on the channel. Um, but this helmet uh, is all new. It features, get this, uh, an all new proprietary spherical technology, which was powered by MIPS, which actually redirects forces, impact forces away from the brain. So obviously impacts, concussions uh, on the, are on the minds of many people at the moment, pardon the pun there. Now I have to say, it is a very stylish helmet. Uh, I love the mix of the matte and the raw carbon finish here. There's quite an advanced cooling system System on this helmet. It's called TS, which is Thermal Exchange Airflow System. So uh, in simple terms, we have got 16 import vents here, which suck cold air into the helmet. And then you've got five ports at the rear here, which expel some of the hot air. So it's a very well ventilated helmet and also light too, at a thousand grams. Now, Bell say this is the most advanced full-face helmet they've ever produced. It features the uh, very lightweight, as I mentioned, uni unidirectional carbon. It's got a uh, full selection of cheek pads and inserts in here, which is in the kit. You've got a bag as well, obviously. Uh, and a very cool feature is actually the integrated camera breakaway mounts, which is located at the top of the helmet there. Sizes from extra small up to extra, extra large. The price 650 euros. So folks, get yourselves involved in that competition. It's one free giveaway helmet to one lucky winner. Right folks, back to uh, more news from Honda Arabia. Yeah, some great times on the Old Bear Wild on some equally amazing trails here uh, above the Bay of Biscay. Although I have to say, I'm glad to be back in the safety of a port. I was shaking earlier on. So here we have the port of Honda Arabia, if you're ever wondering to get to this part of the world. 
Uh, had some news of uh, former Olympian Andreas Hessler reminding me about the mega volt race, which he says is quickly becoming the ground zero for EMTB riders. Um, fantastic trails, gr great kind of social activities after riding. And uh, Andreas says, have a mind-blowingly good time and figure out just what these EMTBs are all about. So that's taking place on the 2nd to the 4th of June this year. Remember, we've got our own uh, global bike festival taking place in Salbach, Austria. So get yourself on the, on the website and get some tickets for that event. Everybody will be there, road, off-road, and of course, EMBN. Now, cool places. Where have you guys been riding your EMTBs in the past few weeks? Obviously, we're in a very cool place here in the Basque Country. Check out our other videos uh, on the new Shimano EP6, which is coming out soon. Now, this video actually is one of the best videos that's ever been submitted by you guys onto uh, where in the world, you know, cool places. This is from Brian, who's in the Pentland Hills, south of Edinburgh on his Levo. Uh, this is the Five Peaks, and it just shows that even though, you know, many of us live, you know, in, in urban areas, this really does show how quickly you can get out into the hills and enjoy some fantastic trails. So, Brian, thanks so much for sending this video in. It's, uh, it's very inspirational, I have to say. The hills there look truly amazing to ride in E-Mountain. Like the five peaks, like you say, you've got some fantastic shots, fantastic drone shots. And it goes to show that, you know, lots of us live in urban areas. That's a place you can quickly get to on your E-Mountain bike. Uh, remember, there's some other great riding uh, to be found south of Edinburgh. You've got Peebles and you've got Inner Leithen, where you've got some fantastic trails too. Now, one other shot, I have to apologize to Cave, who's out in the Philippines and uh, some really lush looking forest there. I didn't actually show a picture of you with your bike last week, so here's a shot to make up for it for you on your giant brain. So, Philippines, I mean, what a spot. Comments now, folks, on a video we put on the channel last week, which was on game-changing e-mountain bikes. Now, obviously, you can't please everybody, and there definitely were some bikes there which were super close to getting into my list of top 10. Um, there's some uh, good feedback. Uh, one of them is from Symmetricon, who says, uh, now that was the right time for me, just bought a Rocky Mountain Altitude Powerplay A70, an absolute weapon, uh, handles amazingly. Yeah, I mean, the Rocky Mountain, 108 Newton meters, it's certainly a bike that enables you to do some crazy technical climbs. Um, next up, we've got a comment from Stephen Schiff, who says, very interesting information, would be cool to do, see, do a review of the high bike. Now, the thing is, with the high bike, we've had lots of high bikes on the channel, but that first one from 2010, my neighbor down the road has actually got one, Denise, but I tried to get a ride in it the other day, but she's like, no, you're not doing it. And I was quite surprised, but uh, maybe we'll have to buy some more flowers and some chocolates to do that. Um, what we'll say is that bike is still going after 10 years. That's kind of testimony to just how, how good a job that Bosch and High Bike did on that bike. And funnily enough, um, there's a comment from Lance Cogger, Clogger, sorry, uh, who says, Hi Bike EQX2 FSRX purchase September 2012, still ridden regularly. Previous bike to High Bike was a Muddy Fox Explorer purchased in 1997, 1987 and still got it. So I mean, that goes to show, right? I mean, it was a truly uh, great bike of an era and it's still going well now. Okay, folks, it's bike vault time. Some of you not being very happy that all the bikes in the bike vault are get super nice. So let's change it up for the week in Basque Country. The first one is from Andy out in uh, Trinidad, Colorado, and it's a Rossignol Mandate. I've never seen this before. 170 mil travel, very cool looking bike. And then the next shot is a Merida E160. This time it's from Daniel out in Buxton. Australia. And I've chosen this, this shot because I think this is a really cool angle of the Merida E160. I've not seen it like this before, but it shows some really a nice silhouette of the bike. And I think it's a really cool um, mud guards on the bike as well. Now, next up is, well, I, cho I chose this because I think it's a really stealth looking giant rain, which uh, I've not actually seen before. This is Peter's giant rain uh, out in Berlin. And the final shot is actually, we talk of cool bikes. This is actually, a cool bike in what seems to be a very cool place, uh, sub-zero temperatures. This is Jared's track rail. Now, 
Obviously on a uh, track you can get Project One bikes where you can have your own custom colors. But I think this red is absolutely stunning. So obviously we buy bikes for looks as well as functionality. So yeah, what a banger. And then the next shot is, like I said, I mean, that, that red rail earlier was amazing, but this time Jeff has got a coil shock, so that orange going with the orange paintwork. I mean, come on, that is a super nice for sure. Uh, Tubby, Orbea Rise, Fox 36s on that. I mean, Orbea, we've been riding the Orbea Wild here in Northern Spain. Uh, obviously the Orbea comes in the Rise as well, which has got the Rise RS motor, 60 newton meters. It's quite interesting actually, that bike is kind of like at the, at the high end of low to mid power bikes and at the low end of the high power bikes. It's kind of, it's kind of in the sweet spot really. So yes, uh, super nice for sure for Tubby. Uh, next up is, oh, that's a nice shot. Where's this? Aberystwyth, Paul and his Cannondale. Wow, it's gotta be super nice, right? And then we've got Terence and a white. Now this is a nice propped up bike. Nice and super nice folks. Gotta be super nice, right? And then we have got a nice angle in the garage of Greg and his Levo in Can. I mean, it's kind of like Can here, isn't it? Uh, that's a nice shot. A very clean bike, I have to say. And then we have got another old bear from Lee, who's in South Shields. That's a nice shot for sure. And, uh, and we've got a barking dog which means that's the end of this week's EMBN show from the Basque Country. Thanks for joining us. I have to say, I need to go and have a, have a coffee and maybe a quick beer to get over that terrifying, terrifying slab in the Bay of Biscay earlier today. So thanks for joining us. Let us know what you think of the old Bay of Wild and we'll see you next week.